It's time to honor one of the greatest players in baseball history, Ricky Henderson. What do you remember about coming and playing and being a part of Canada's team? I came over here because of, uh, you know, Dave Stewart was here and, you know, that's one of my best friends and, and he wanted me to come over here because he felt they had a great team and, you know, Oakland was, you know, rebuilding the soil like that and it was a good chance for me to go get back to the World Series. What did you learn about Canada and Toronto when, when you got here and played here every day? You know, what I, a lot of things what I learned about is, is the, the fans, the people. The fans was more important to me on, you know, how they accept you, you know, and, and what they was all about. And I remember the time that, you know, I was playing against them. And, you know, when I came to Toronto, I, you know, they was really said on the radio, you just boo Ricky, boo Ricky. And then all of a sudden I was just tearing up the ball. And they, the next day they said on the radio, don't boo him because he's playing so well. So it was some of the things like that. The people was, was great to me. Uh, my teammates was excellent. And the organization treated me just well. You think of all that talent on that team. You're the guy who's in the Hall of Fame. McGuire, Canseco, they're not. The PD users of your era aren't. Should they be? You know, from where they played and what they was all about, yes, I think they should have been in the Hall of Fame. That era that, you know, I guess steroids was going around, it really wasn't against the baseball rule, but then they made it out of the baseball rule. Them guys still had to go out there and they had to put the bat on the ball, they had to create something. And they was a fun bunch for us to see them hit home runs. We always know that we was in the ball game at any given time, you know, I can get on base pass can steal a couple of bases, get in the scoring position, and, and also if I didn't get on the base pad, they was one of the, the key players to hit the ball in the ballpark. He did push-ups mm -hmm. before the game. <laughs> you were known <laughs> to, to be physical special, looking like a football player playing baseball. How'd that become part of your routine? As you say, I looked like a football player. I was a football player. I didn't want to play baseball. In, in high school, I was All-American. I thought I was going to college to be a football player, and maybe I was going to get in the NFL as a football player. That was my dream. My mom's dream was a different dream. She thought I was too small, and she felt that I might get hurt, so she was a big, big baseball fan. And I accepted it, and I had told her in a few years, if I don't move up the ladder as a baseball player, I would go back to college and play football. So happened that I was having success in the minor league and kept moving up the ladder and got used to playing the game of baseball. So it just happened that way that I became a great baseball player. You have to stay stretched and flexible to get into this stance. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're teaching this stance now that you're working with the Oakland A's players. I don't, there's hardly any strength zone there. <laughs> Tell me how you got that stance. To tell you the truth, this stand right here, you know, I, every time I look at it, I go, wow, was I that low and, you know, the scratch zone? And I, I see why a lot of the pitchers was getting so upset because if they didn't put the ball right down the middle of the plate, it was a little bit too high, a little bit too low. So uh, I developed the, this here as I, in the, maybe I think in double A. At first, I wanted to be a Reggie Jackson type hitter. I wanted to hit home runs. And I got into my league and I tried to hit home runs and stuff like that. And I was scratching out and I wasn't getting on the base pass at all forced to use my speed, so I developed it maybe to get into a little crouch. You gave uh, the pitchers trouble in that World Series, so much so that you're on base when Joe Carter hits his home run. Yeah. How does that sequence happen with, with you creating havoc on first base? It was based on the decree to have when I get on base pass, you know, to try to make the pitchers, you know, pay a little attention to you on the base pass too. When I was on second base and uh, Mitch Williams was on the mound, and he used to throw Joe Carter a lot of uh, slider and stuff like get Joe Carter all uh, scrack out or he get him popped up a slider. So I was trying to move move, move around in the, uh, on second base. We had one out, and I, I think when the, the game was over, Mitch, Mitch Williams said, "You know, I was worried about you still in third base, and me worried about." Throwing the slide and getting Joe Carter out, and he ended up hanging the slide, and Joe Carter hit a home run. We won the World Series.